in honour of the local efforts to get the piece of the Agula Highway between Blackbutt and Yarman, named after Roy Emerson, Jason has very kindly allowed this recipe to be called Roy Emerson Way. And it looks and tastes delicious, I know, because I had some. Hear that? All right. Welcome everyone to the second cooking demonstration of today. Uh, I'm Jason Ford, the Regional Food Ambassador for the South of Net. And we have a very special guest with us here today. All right. We have State Member for the Nango, Miss Deb Franklinson, with us today. Everyone, put your hands together for Deb. Now, I, I will say that we're, we're doing a, a very special recipe today. Last year, we, we did a cooking demonstration last year. We did. We made holiday sauce. So yeah, that's right. And I'm still making a holiday sauce that Jason told me to cook last year. There so, thank go. you. So, Deb's going to return the favour, actually, because Deb spoke to me about a pesto recipe that she actually won an award for at the r &A show. Second prize? Well, I kept second, yes. That's pretty, that is pretty good. In my pesto, yes. Exactly. So when I heard about that, Deb, I thought, you know, I want to see how this is done. And you've got a little, a couple of little tricks to it. Yeah, I do. It's a pretty basic recipe, though. Like, I'm, I'm just a home cook, like all of us. And um, so, Jason, I'm a bit nervous. You're making me nervous here. And he's like, you know, the South Burnett, food ambassador, but more than that, you know, this is the bloke that actually ends up on the stage with all those famous chefs down at the um, regional flavours. Yep. Uh, I've seen you there with Matt Galinsky. Yes. There's just so many of those big names. So um, no, you'll no, probably watch no. me make this and say, seriously, I'll, I'll teach you how to make it better. You'll, you'll be nice with Deb, won't you? You'll encourage her. All right, so, uh, and the thing is though, Deb, now that you're going to give away your secrets, you're not going to be able to answer this in a competition ever again, because everyone knows the secrets. Well, no, they can, but they can just make their own as well. You can copy my recipe. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll go through it together. All right, so oh, just so you know, we're making a avocado pesto fettuccine pasta. All right, so I just wanted to come up with a dish that we can incorporate the pesto into. Which is fantastic, because mainly um, Jason had a great idea uh, to use the avocado oil, which I think is fantastic. And I actually, for my recipe, Jason, I, um, I use any oil, and the avocado oil, the pressed purity avocado oil made in King Roy, uh, is actually, and from local avocados, is... Um, something uh, I have actually used before because I have I use whatever's in my cupboard and Josh obviously gave me one once that I hadn't used. My cupboard's filled with this. Yeah. <laughs> I've always got to sort through it, you know. Uh, but um, yes, and you know I wonder whether you should be the regional food ambassador sometimes because Ted so. knows everything about all the regional products. There's no question I ask you you don't know an answer to. So avocado oil, it's the extra virgin cold press. All right. Yep. So, um, not really for cooking though. You don't want to cook and heat this stuff up. It's it's for something like pesto or for salad dressing. Yeah. So, what do you think though? Will it? Um, if we're putting it on hot pasta, that's okay. It won't. No, that's fine. Just that's warm. Fine. Just warm okay. through. will be fine. So, Deb, I think we'll we'll get started because I think we'll yep. go straight into the little trick we will. you have. All right. Okay. So when I entered this the first time in the Brisbane Echo. I was trying to work out how I could maintain my basil to be green. Uh, so I actually, I blanched, I blanched half of the basil uh, very quickly. And so for those of you who don't know how to blanch, which I'm sure you will do, um, I'm just worried about, yeah, so literally all I do is I, are you right to get this out quickly for me? Oh, I'll be fine. Okay. <laughs> no pressure, Jason. Just on hands. <laughs> Um, I basically, so this is the amount, Jason's already, um, uh, what did you call it? There was a technical term. Picked. He picked. picked He's basil. already picked it. So I'll just get half of the basil, I'm going to blanch it really quickly, which means just putting it in boiling water, and then you put it um, straight into the iced cold water. you let me know when that's ready, Deb. Um, I want your opinion on this. You want it just to wilt, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I just need it to wilt a little bit, I think that's still... Because you don't want all the green to come out of it, uh, but you also don't want to cook it too much. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so we'll get that um, out. And then, and then that way it maintains the green, because sometimes when you make pesto, the basil sort of tends to brown slightly. 
And uh, to tell you the truth, I entered uh, my basil pesto in the effort this year. I didn't blanch and I didn't get a prize. Well, there you go. So, the proof's in the pudding. I'm now yeah. being honest about that. I, they didn't even display mine this year. I was a bit devastated. Wrong. No, I actually think um, I'm, I'm still trying to get to know who the judge is. That's it. There we go. Well done. <laughs> So that's uh, refreshed. So putting it into the ice water, when you wilt any kind of leaf, whether it be spinach or basil, that sort of thing, plunge it immediately into the ice water that will lock in all that colour that you're trying to hold on to. All right? Just save. And Jason's had such a great idea. Because we're going to be making the, the um, what was it, the avocado basil fettuccine, no, avocado um, pesto fettuccine. Yes. Um, Jason suggested that we now cook the fettuccine in the, the water that we've just blanched. That is a water. Beautiful. What a genius. See, I would have thought of that. And what you've got to do now, this is really important. Everyone needs to know this when you're cooking with pasta, you need to have a rolling boil. Generally, it's about 10 times the amount of water as the pasta that you're cooking, so you get enough movement. But what's really important is that you add salt to that, and it has to be enough salt that it tastes like the ocean. Really? Yeah, it tastes like the ocean. That's right. Hey, don't you hang on. Sorry, I'm <laughs> too Well, how about both sides then, Deb? All right. Because you. Who's heard of that? Like, if you spill the salt, you've got to do that, right? That's yeah. right. I don't yeah. know what happens to you if you don't. Yeah, but... both sides, just be sure, okay? Okay. All right. So we'll take this uh, fettuccine. This is the, the fresh fettuccine. It only takes about, say, seven minutes to cook. Don't want to let it all clump together. So once it goes in there, then we give it a little bit of a stir. And she goes. And Deb's just collected the... Uh, the blender. And for all us home cooks, do not put your fingers in the boiling water like Jason is. You must really have tough hands. Yeah, I don't have any sensation in my fingers <laughs> whatsoever anymore. I've burnt them that many times. So that's going to just simmer away a rolling boil, about seven minutes or so. We want it to be al dente. If anyone doesn't know, al dente is Italian for to the tooth. To so the tooth. To the tooth, a little chewy still, but cooked, all right? Young and like mush. All right, so we're going to keep our eye on that. So what are you doing now, Deb? Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm going to make the pesto, but first of all, um, what we have to do is we have to whiz up the basil. Um, there's no technical... Uh, yep, Jason's going to get me the blanched stuff. We then... I'm going to have to grab that one. Yeah. Oh, we're going to have an open um, water. Now, the other... The other thing is, too, with the pine nuts, you should always... Well, if you're in my family, you've got to buy two batches because I always burn the first batch. But you have to um, uh, put them in the oven and brown them slightly, but don't brown them too much. I've got some, I've got some little hints on that one, Yeah, actually. I'd love to hear them because Jason's was, already done this. Probably. Yeah, that's right. I toasted those last night in the oven and I did it on 140 degrees Celsius, really slow, because things like almonds and, and peanuts, they contain a lot of oil, and that oil has what they call a low smoking point, which means it'll burn at low temperatures. Put, put these nuts in a hot oven, they're gonna burn on the outside and be raw in the middle. So you wanna cook them just slowly. So 140, or you could also, on a low heat in a frying pan if you wanted to, you know, you could pop them in there and, and saute. Sauté, yeah. You know what sauté means, folks? It's French for jumping. Alright, that's what sauté means. Do you want to go with that, Deb? Show everyone how to do it. There you go. Come on, sauté. There we go. Yes, she knows how to sauté. Oh, there we go. That's okay, you always lose a couple. Alright. Okay, which knife is the double? Should we give it a sharp knife, folks? Because everyone knows you should never touch a chef's knife. So you can use those, okay. that's fine. I save those ones for politicians. That's fine. <laughs> All right, so in this uh, salted water, let's have a look how our pasta's going. Starting to soften. This is that fresher pasta, it doesn't take long. All right. See what Deb's doing there? Crushing those garlic cloves, that gets the seeds off. Oh, seeds, or gets the skins off. Jeez, we have I just want to tell a really quick garlic story. Um, I know we're meant to be talking about cooking, but this week um, I had the absolute pleasure of meeting this amazing gentleman called Kim. Uh, who was about 80-something, and he lived in Stanthorpe and lost his entire home. 
and it was really sad and he's a, an old German bloke and he's the funniest guy in the world. But anyway, as I'm leaving, he said, aren't you from King Roy? And he said, my niece has just garlic in King Roy. So he was oh. telling me about the black garlic and how much she eats. Um, but garlic, this garlic's a bit of a secret to pesto. Um, I just put in about sort of almost half a clove uh, for that much basil, but you can put as much in as you want. If I was cooking this for my husband Jason, I'd have to put the whole clove in because uh, he loves it. And then uh, about that, that many pine nuts, so I'm not very good at amounts. Um, what else? A pinch of salt. Uh, and because Jason's here, we're going to give it a fair bit of salt. Yes, absolutely. That's right, I've got to season your food, um, very important. Yeah. Yeah, you want lemon, don't you? Yeah, I want a really little bit of lemon rind, but I'm going to put that in at the end. No pepper at this stage, no. Is that is that because the um, the basil is sort of peppery itself? Yeah, that... I yeah, I probably agree with that. You could if you're really into that sort of thing, but basil has kind of a pepperiness to it. Yeah, I think you'll find basil worth a treat if you have to. Now, a little bit of a, a, a trick here as well, Deb, is you might want to, have you added your oil yet? Okay, so we'll add some oil, that'll get a little bit of circulation going. I'm cutting some lemon zest, just one, you want just one piece or half of that, or? Um, about half, that's the, that's the lemon zest. Now, I had a couple of thoughts about this one, Deb, I thought, you know, we could probably, even if we wanted to, is put, oh look at that, coming in right. We could put a little bit of the hot water from the pasta in there to help mix it, because remember, this pesto is going to be a sauce, isn't it? So we'll actually organise that. We'll pour a little bit of this warm water in there, that should help it blend as a sauce. Alright, there we go. Salted basil water. How's that, Deb? Is that working? It is, absolutely. And we'll put our zest in as well. I need to be able to taste it, Jason. Okay, there's a container with some cutlery there. There you go. See, I think of everything. I'm, I'm, I'm like a Boy Scout. I'm always prepared. Were you going to put your finger in that? No, no, we don't put our fingers in the food a la MKR, Master Chef, unless you use a different finger at a time. Yeah. Alright, what do you think of that? And you got your palms and cheese in there? Or is that your next ingredient? Okay, so palms and cheese here. So I forgot the palms. No, all good. Oh, that's see, what... this doesn't taste right. No, there you go. So that's going to be like a bit more seasoning, really, isn't it? Palms yeah, and cheese. It is. And I think I need a few more palms. That's fine. No worries. And if you need a little bit more of that blendable consistency, remember you've got your warm water here, which we can add as well. Your... She's hiding her secrets from you folks, you see that? She doesn't want you to see how it's done. No, I'm not, but I did forget the pumpkin, and that's one of the main ingredients. So. <laughs> that, that is the risks of cooking live on stage, folks. I've done it myself before, but there's one ingredient we're not allowed to forget today. What's that? Avocado oil. That's right, avocado, avocado oil. Avocado. And I've, had to, I've put a heap of avocado oil in. See, my little trick is I actually, uh, I do, I actually shake it. And I'll tell you something, Jeff. I was doing this on stage at Regional Flavors, right? Yeah. With one of those good, uh, juices, yeah. you know? And all of a sudden, all these springs and wires and stuff started shooting out the bottom and sparks started flying. I burnt the whole machine out by shaking it. Well, see, I actually use, I've got the best little blender. It's a little Oscar. Yes. And you can't buy them anymore. And I really need one because mine's all busted up and broken. Okay. That's coming together beautiful. But remember, we're adding this to a frying pan as well. Alright? Now, Jeff, what we're also going to do. Oh, did that get me in the face? <laughs> but you also nearly broke your thing. You spatula. No, I didn't. No. This guy's crazy cool. Oh, I was millimetres away from the Sorry, face. Sorry, crazy shit. Alright. Okay. So, I think what we'll do, Deb, also is one of the garnishes I want to put with this pasta dish is some. Um, hand-fried trust cherry tomatoes that have been vine ripened. So we'll use some uh, olive oil for this one, if I can find the olive oil. Or we'll actually use, there we are. 
So we'll warm up that frying pan on a sort of a medium heat. And our pasta will be coming along. Do you want me to have a taste? Do you want my professional opinion, dude? Yeah. All right. No. Good? No, it's perfect. That's okay, fantastic. one of the biggest problems I have as, as a home oh. cook, Jason, is I never know when to stop adding stuff. Oh, no, that's fantastic. I keep fantastic. tasting anything. I don't know. Because I, I think we better get some, uh, uh, someone's opinion from the yeah. audience where you're at. Okay, who would like to taste it? Maybe the lady that thinks we should put pepper in my pesto. I'll come out here. Yeah. Here we go. Can I sit on your lap? All right. <laughs> All right. So let's have a taste of this here. Here we go. Here we go. Open up. It's delicious, folks. There you go. <laughs> oh, well done, Tiger. <laughs> Doesn't need pepper. No, we'll see, basil is really quite peppery, isn't it, Jason? And garlic. It is. I, I agree. So we haven't put the... Um, oh, you want to blend that in there as well? Yeah. We've got some lemon rind we can put in there and blend that in as well. And I think, again, it, yeah, that's fantastic. Pop it back on. Blend it in. And you can actually make this with any herb you want, really, can't you? Yeah, you can. Um, you can make a dessert one with some mint yeah. as well. You can put mint and peanuts and make a mint peanut pesto with sugar in there. Mint peanut pesto, there you go. Mm -hmm. All right, that's that, fantastic. I really am liking that avocado oil in it. Yeah, I turn this one down. I've made it once with peanut oil, uh, but not the end almond You guys are in the splash zone. I'll just warn you of that now. All right? So Jason, why tomatoes? Do you think tomatoes just go well with basil? Or? Yeah, they do. Um, you know, there's, who's heard of MSG, flavour enhancer? Well, there are some natural MSGs, and they all seem to be in Italian cookery. Okay, so basil has a natural flavour enhancer, natural MSG. Tomatoes do, palms and cheese does. All those three things together, you're just going to get a wow flavour dish. Alright? The Italians have known that for years, they don't need to add much. If, if you want to reduce your salt in your dishes, fresh herbs. That'll enhance the flavour. Alright, turn this one down. I've oh, never heard Jason Ford say if you want to reduce the salt. That's excellent. <laughs> Although I cook with a lot of salt as well. Really I've got over here uh, some chilli salt. Yeah? This is from Chinchilli. Ch Chinchilli, which is another one of our local it is. Uh, King Roy people, but are they that it's not, it's made in Chichilla or? No, no, it's King Roy. It's yeah. King Roy? Yeah, it is. Don't All right. No, 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 I have to. Do you want to come up there, dude? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So, hang on. What, I just want to explain what Jason just did there. So what, just chilli salt? That's chilli salt, just sprinkled over those tomatoes. And what sort of oil did you put in there? That was olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. I didn't want to heat it up too hot because, again, it's got a... I'll look at the caramelisation of those. Beautiful. That's fantastic. We've got our pasta here. So I think what we'll do now, Deb, is we'll actually take a frying pan. Oh, it's beautiful. It's fantastic. You've got the seal of approval. Yeah. Okay. There we go. So in goes our pasta. Look at that. Al dente. Do you know how to tell whether it's al dente, folks? Throw it up against the fridge. Throw it on the roof. Oh. If, if it stays up there, <laughs> And if it's still there by Christmas, you know that your pass is ready. Alright, in she goes. Have you got any oil in there, Jason? No, I, I haven't because we'll add some pesto in a minute, which has, has some heaps of oil. That's right, absolutely. Okay. You know, at the pe uh, Bacon Fest, I was cooking with Adrian Richardson. Really? Yeah, Adrian Richardson. And he makes a mess like you wouldn't believe. I've never seen him like it. I it's like, we've been pretty it's like the Tasmanian devil, right? <laughs> cooking on stage. So in here we'll add some of your pesto. Do you want to add that now? Oh, go for it. That's it, add some more. There you go. That's great. Alright. And what we'll do is we'll add a little bit of the liquid just to make it saucy. Remember this is salted. And because we put pasta in it, the water kind of has a little bit of a thickening to it as well. It's a little thickening agent. Look at this. That's See how delicately Jason can do that? That's right, let's mix it through. That doesn't happen in my house. We're going to get you to saute this one for us. No. <laughs> that looks Look amazing. At the green 
Five very good. green. And what's the secret ingredient today, folks? Avocados. Avocados. So we're going to turn it off now. That's warmed up beautifully. It looks fantastic. We'll get our avocados. These are locally grown ripened avocados. Perfect. Uh, we'll get our sharp knife. This is by Jamie Oliver. Okay, Jamie Oliver? Very posh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll cut this in half. Like that. And I know the, 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 the farmer is here somewhere. Was, who, who grew these? But there was the farmer was in here early and he was terrified when I opened yeah. it up. You know, because you know sometimes you open them up and they're not as good. But look at that. Perfect. Oh, see, I had every confidence there. <laughs> All right, so what we'll do is we'll peel it and you can remove it with a spoon if you want it. But these avocados, the loved ones. Yeah. Look, the skin just comes straight off. Look at that. And I love when you take the skin off. It's got that velvety, beautiful velvety look on the outside there. All right. Yeah. Oh, it's all, it's all going to hell now. <laughs> there we go. Oh, the end of the knife. Yeah, with the heel, because that's close to your hand, you know. You get a little bit of a firmer hit on there. So I think we'll dice this one up. Actually, you know what? We're going to dice that one up, and we're going to fan this one. All right, because it's so nice. So we'll fan this for a decoration to go on top, because we can do that. That's why. All right, so fanned out. This one's better. There you go, that's okay, we'll dice it. This one's better to be diced because it's a bit rougher. Oh, that's fine, we'll dice it. That's fantastic. All right. And you know, we'll sprinkle a few pine nuts on top of this as well. Decoration, we'll sprinkle some more parmesan on top. And another little trick with my pasta dish as well at the end, which I'll show everyone. All right, so we've got our warm pasta here. Oh, look, I don't want to cook this avocado. I only want to warm it through. So let's pop it in here. All right, we'll get one here. Yum, yum. And, and we need to choose. We need to choose a bowl for this. What do you, what do you reckon? Out of there. What? I love I it. Like I love it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There we go. All right. So here it is. Our avocado. Deb Freckleton a la pesto. <laughs> Take that out, look at that, folks. Let's swirl around. What is that? My pesto has never looked this good. Oh, here we go. Avocado on top, like that. And also, we've got our grilled tomatoes here, which we'll decorate on top. There, look at that. Look at that. Put those around. These tomatoes, they're just collapsing on themselves now. All right. Put those around. And we'll put some pine nuts on top, some parmesan cheese. Just, I'm just fascinated here. Just to remind everyone that there's pine nuts in there, some parmesan. Yeah. Do you want to throw this over your shoulder? Yeah, I right. love the salt. Okay, and you know, what I love to do with a pasta dish yeah. is drizzle some flavorful oil over it. All right, because what it adds to the moisture and you know it, it's a more moist. And I dare say you're using avocado oil. Avocado oil, oil bright green, fantastic. And I'm I'm actually going to take your advice and I'm going to put some pepper on there because you know when the pasta goes out to the Italian restaurants, the waiter comes out with a big pepper yeah. shell and he says, "You want some pepper?" Look at that. Put that on there, and you know what else we'll do? We'll actually get our fanned avocado. That. Just because there's not quite enough there's avocado. There's not enough, never 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 enough avocado. avocado. And yeah, we'll I was going to say, we need a piece. Let's yeah. pop that on top. And there we go, folks. How yeah, good is that? Well done, Jason Ford. Let's go. Avocado, fettuccine, with Jake's very special recipe. Here we go. Paparazzi. <laughs> That's okay, slippery little sucker. <laughs> There we go, folks. So please, can everyone put their hands together for Deb Franklinton?